Hi. So assuming you've seen the video of the webinar uh, I had in the summer, you should be kind of familiar with the features of Autodesk Fusion 360. But without actually practicing those various commands uh, to create something new, it is difficult to get a feel for the system and truly feel confident in using that. So what I thought is we could have a little exercise where we try to sort of design a robotic arm keeping the motors we use into some consideration. Uh, the, this design cannot actually be used in any kind of setting like uh, 3D printing it and trying to make a robotic arm out of it would be disastrous. But it is a good idea to try this out in order to become more familiar with Fusion 360. So we will not be considering the torques of the motors and whether the lengths and the masses are viable and stuff like that. We will not be considering whether this is a proper fit in terms of the tolerances. Like, should we make our holes 1 mm wider? Should we keep this 1 mm apart or 0.5 mm apart? Uh, we won't be considering that. And we will not be considering material strength or deformation. And this is only about how to use Autodesk Fusion 360 effectively. Right then, let's get started. So, uh, in this first part, we will be trying to create a model for a motor. The motor we are working with is the Dynamixel MX106. It seems to be a very capable motor and is probably what one would use for, say, the shoulder. And, uh, so here you can see that it is basically composed of a cuboidal block with uh, two rims where there are these mounting holes and there is this uh, hub kind of thing. Uh, this coupling over here where you can mount something. So I have already prepared a model of that over here. Uh, this includes an optional uh, coupling which can be used to uh, connect other components. Say we would use this uh, big part over here with all these holes and stuff in order to connect the actual structure of the robotic arm. So uh, this is what we hope to create today. So let me just open up a new file. Right. So now let's open the uh, drawings we have for this. I have already downloaded the drawings and uh, you can find them in the GitHub repo for all the Enigma tutorials or on the website for the Enigma tutorials. All right. So uh, this is the drawing of the motor. Now, if none of this makes sense to you, I would suggest that you should pick up the CBSE textbooks for engineering graphics for 11th and 12th standard and uh, go through them, particularly the sections on orthographic projection and stuff. So basically this one right here is the front view. This is the side view. This is the rear view. And what's above over here is the top view and there are various dimensions given here. It's a lot to take in in one go. So one skill you need is to try to let the details fade away and just see what is essential at that moment. So what we can see here is basically uh, where is that? So this front part over here 
is what is there over here like this right so what we know about the design of this thing is that basically the motor can be approximated by a cube so let's start with that so let's create a sketch now if you wish to utilize any of the symmetries in the model in order to make your designing work easier and you should it's it's really essential try to keep your origin in the center of the sketch i will it will become apparent why we need this in uh, the later half of this video okay so the huh 46 okay 46 and okay no okay not this view let's try doing this view here yeah uh 29 by what the basic cube is 29 wide and uh, fine okay Yeah, so when I'm doing my engineering drawings, I cannot think both geometrically and algebraically at the same time. So, th this is to ensure that uh, the origin is in the center of the drawing. And if you don't know what I'm doing right now, just uh, hang on a more, it'll become clear in a moment. Uh, then we have we want this dimension now so we have 14.5 plus what 45 so that should be what And let's uh, just measure the lines to be sure. That's 29 and that's 29, fine. And uh, that's 59.5, this is 45 plus 14.5 which should be 59.5 unless I'm really freaking out here fine great uh, hang on just huh Yeah. Anyway. Uh, next, what do we need to do? Let's uh, project this cube up. How far up? Uh, we know this is 46. So that's how high this needs to go. 46 right so that's the basic form of our motor fine now that's this part here basically now we need to make this rim thingy here where we have all the mounting points fine so now if you go back to the original image where was that yeah all the pixels are okay open image in new tab yeah so you can see here that there is this rim type thing here and it has a lot of mounting holes so going back to the engineering drawing it's this part which is shown to be here 
like this fine so this thing which is jutting out here that corresponds to this so now let's go back to our first sketch and add in that feature so we know that this rim over here how wide is it okay so end to end that's 40.2 so that should be uh, 20.1 and end to end that's 65.1 fine Okay, uh, let me just ensure everything's consistent. 5.6. Fine. Uh, yeah, last time I made this, I noticed that this rim here is uniform. Just a small thing. Uh, right now, let's make the holes. So these two are the well. Make only one side. You don't have to make the other side. You can just mirror it off. Uh, so if you make one side, uh, that's eleven away. Yeah. But where is it? Okay, we'd better put that 14.5 line. It's being referred to too much. 14.5 uh, from the top. Okay. Uh, so from this line, go down 47.8. Okay. Forty seven point eight. Okay. Uh, and they are twenty two apart, so eleven on one side. Uh, now we make a circle and uh, how big are these circles? So 8 M 2.5 tap through. Uh, so that's 8 holes which are of the metric 2.5 mm screw thread. So these are threaded holes over here. That's what M 2.5 means and it's of the there's a standard of threads for screws known as metric thread and uh, that's uh, what this is following over here. That's what this means. Uh, let's see what. Ha. So fine. Just saying that it's a screw hole of that sort made using that. Fine. 
so now we want to know what is the whole size actually because for a 2.5 mm metric thread uh, it's not actually 2.5 mm the whole size so whole clearance 2.5 metric So tapping sizes and clearance holes. So for M 2.5, the clearance hole is 2.9. So this is useful to know because if you want a part which is going to take a screw of a particular size through that, uh, this is the number which matters, the clearance hole, 2.9. So. Two point nine. Now, uh, going to the other holes over here. Uh, this one is four above and okay. Uh, thirty-four point six, seventeen point three. Uh, yeah, 17.3. And... Okay. So the first one is four above. Then the next one is 18 below. Uh, yeah, 18 below. And the last one is from there 22. Okay, now all these four are equal. Let me just move the dimensions out of the way. This should be a dotted line. Yeah, this, this, yeah, that covers it. Now, this equals this, this equals this, and this equals this. Great. Now, mirror tool objects to select this 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 and this mirror line is this and we have those eight holes oops uh yeah Now, uh, let's, uh, okay, equidistant from the center of the block, 34 is the clearance, uh, the outer clearance of these uh, holes over here. Okay, 34. So that's what, 17? 
from the center uh, and this is 23 from the center 23 minus 17 so that's 6 so this distance over here is 6 right uh, 23 minus 17 is indeed 6 okay so this thing should be 6 mm then 34 mm then again 6 mm right so how do we do this we take this extrude offset plane offset 6 mm ensure that it's 6 mm above and distance okay the distance is not measured uh, it's not provided over here so you have two choices if you only have a pdf of it you can uh, assuming it's a scale drawing you can try to extrapolate from the other distances uh, but it doesn't really matter i mean if i ensure that my mounting is through here and never from inside which i can't because cables might be running through there uh if you look at the dynamic cells uh, images cables run through here so i can't do that so what matters more is this 34 than this width so i'm just going to assume say 3 mm and pray that it works in real life what you can do is once you get the motor uh, you can actually measure this distance out using a vernier caliper and then just uh, plug that back in. In fact, you should probably measure everything out once with a vernier just to ensure that it is up to spec and that your tolerance is matched. But that's not the point of this video. So we go back and uh, give it a nice uh, 3 mm rise. Uh, let's just see if that's okay. Yes, it is. Fine. Now we take the, uh, let's take the lower one. You'll understand why in a moment. Extrude again, offset plane, offset 34. and okay the offset is off kilter here three going down okay so next comes okay let's just save this much uh, Okay, so we've got these holes and uh, next is we need to add in that coupling up front. Right. So we have First, let's go 14.5 down. Fine, we know that's the center. Now observe that the radius of this is not given. And uh, that can be problematic if you have to later on figure out the clearances. Uh, what you have to do in some cases is again assume something based on what you have what information you have and then figure out based on your actual experimental readings like you can physically measure the part out once you get it uh, there is another drawing uh, but i actually remember this dimension from that drawing uh, there is a drawing for this particular coupling here separately so this dia was uh, what 28 yeah in real life you will if you don't have the information you really do need to wait for the part uh, right 
नेक्स्ट ओ दिस डायमेंशन इज ऑल्सो नॉट गिवन एनी वे लेट सी Was it here? No. Okay, we need to hunt for the dimensions of this as well. Unless it's given here. No, not given. Okay, time for some googling. Wow, my internet is really good, guys. Today, oh, H N zero five, N one zero two. Oh, another thing you should know: the Robotis actually provides all the three D files as well, so you don't have to do this. But most of the manufacturers. uh in the indian space don't do that they just provide a pdf of the drawings and uh, that can be difficult to work with without knowing how to process that yeah so this is dia 20 this is dia 10 it's 1.8 high uh, where is that aha uh -huh. dia 10 then uh okay that those details we don't really need so let's just ignore that uh it will become clear once you start building what you need and what you don't need main thing we need is all the uh blocky dimensions of the by blocky i mean like uh, the kinds which will cause problems when you are designing something else using that and also the position of all the mounting holes that's what matters the most so here we can see we have uh okay this drawing is a bit cleaner uh so you can see it's given 8m 2.5 tap dp 2.5 pcd dia 22 I think the DP means depth. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's not relevant here. We are mainly going to use this to align our mounting holes of whatever else we design. What matters is this bit here, M two point five. There are eight of them, and now this PCD dia twenty two. What does PCD dia twenty two mean? What it basically means is that, look, you have eight holes here, and these holes themselves are on a circle of dia 22 so this outer circle here is dia 22 so do i have to make eight holes no there's a simple way in fusion right so we know dia 22 so radius 11 uh let's make one hole uh 2.9 because m 2.5 holes are actually 2.9 wide and uh, create circular pattern uh select that center point is this we need eight holes okay and the smaller one is four uh dia two holes uh pcd 16 fine so pcd 16 is radius 
and again create circular pattern okay we have our eight holes does it look okay Something's making me feel off about this, but I suppose it's okay. If there's any errors, you will be able to spot them, I hope, later on. But yeah, it looks kind of okay. Fine, let's get this going. Uh, next, how much do we actually bring this out? From here, it's three. new body and that was dia 10 i should have actually put it over here and that comes out 1.8 Right. Now, last thing, just so that we can color code it a bit. Uh, uh, bodies, appearance. So, there and in fact if you want okay let's save this and if you want to see uh, how this would look in a proper render not that we need it that's cool in it anyway getting back to work so yeah, this is the first half of the motors video. In the second one, we'll see how to make a coupling, uh, this, uh, what should I call it? Uh, yeah, this one here, this thing, which can be used to attach other things to this motor. Right then, see you next time.